Today I'm going to cover a range of leg exercises using both weights and body weight. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to target the major muscle groups in the legs. My goal is to empower you with the knowledge to choose exercises which suit your situation, goals and preference. If I can help at least one person avoid skipping leg day, mission accomplished. What's your favorite body weight or weighted leg exercise? Comment below and let's see what everyone thinks. <sighs> hey, Daniel Vadnell here for Fitness FAQs. This video is going to address both the anterior chain front of the legs as well as the posterior chain back of the legs. Let's start off with the anterior chain of the body, targeting mainly the quadriceps. In terms of isolation with weights, the leg extension has been a gym staple for many decades. This exercise causes heated debate amongst both fitness professionals and enthusiasts. If the leg extension is an exercise that you want to do, it needs to be incorporated as part of a comprehensively balanced routine to avoid any asymmetry that can happen. As it's a machine-based isolation movement, use an amount of weight which allows you to get a good stretch and squeeze. Higher reps and chasing the pump is preferable with this type of exercise. Honestly, the risk to reward ratio isn't worth it if you're looking to go heavy and it's just going to produce unnecessary stress at the knees. The closest bodyweight counterpart is the natural leg extension. This exercise is preferable from a symmetry perspective because there's more going on. What I mean is the glutes are being engaged during the backward lean. The trunk also needs to be active so the body can hinge back and forth. Applying the trunk and glute cues is going to place a ton of strain on the front of the legs. The quads are forced to work eccentrically during the loading phase. The further you lean backwards, the harder the exercise is going to be. The sissy squat is a phenomenal bodyweight exercise to load the quads because now we're adding a balance component to the situation. As with the natural leg extension, maintaining core and trunk stiffness is needed to make things as hard as possible, which of course is needed to grow and get results. Let's address a common myth which many people hear and it's, is it dangerous for the knees to pass the toes? If you're someone with no pre-existing knee injuries and you're sensible with progression, the sissy squat should be safe. Because we're only using body weight, the goal is to get the knees as far past the toes as we can. The shearing forces in this situation are welcomed because we want to make the quads work as much as we can. This is only possible with this forward knee travel when using strictly body weight. As I said before, you just need to be patient and progressive with sets, reps and range of motion. If you treat this exercise with respect, the sissy squat is going to be a key move in your workout for putting on size. Big legs can be grown with calisthenics if you know how. Building muscle by body weight is pretty straightforward and it can definitely be accomplished with the right approach. My Limitless Legs program includes the best exercises and workouts using only our body weight and bands. With limitless legs, you're able to train anywhere, anytime, meaning there's no longer an excuse for skipping leg day and having chicken legs. All right, let's move on and address the posterior chain of the body, which is going to bias more of the glutes and the hamstrings. An awesome hip hinge exercise is the Romanian deadlift. Basic technique points for this one is to keep the hip and knee angle fixed. This means I don't want you to flex the hip or the knee. No squatting down at all for the Romanian deadlift. Instead, what you're going to do is hinge at the hips by driving the shoulders forward and the hips back. By doing this action, you're going to naturally lower closer towards the ground, stretching the hamstrings. Make sure to keep the bar close to the body throughout the entire range of motion. For my calisthenics audience, this is a great movement to put into your routine because it hits the lower back. The lower spinal erectors are an area which aren't really stressed much in our general calisthenics training. In terms of body weight only to hit the hamstrings, look no further than the Nordic Curl Eccentric. It's not a perfect comparison to the deadlift because the Nordic Curl stresses the hamstring at the knee as opposed to the hip. Either way, it's brutal for lengthening and strengthening the hamstring without any equipment. 
With the Nordic eccentric, don't do what the average person does, rushing when it starts to get hard. Don't get me wrong, it's a bloody tough exercise which is why it takes full concentration every single rep. You'll be surprised at your strength during the eccentric if you apply legitimate effort and focus. I want you to really do your best to fight for every single centimeter on the way down with the goal of getting to parallel under control. Over the weeks and the months of being consistent, you're going to be able to go slower and lower before the body gives up. We're going to start the lunging base comparison with the barbell split squat. This is just one of the many lunge variations that you can do. Long story short, lunging is a quote unquote functional pattern which has a lot to offer. With weights, we have the luxury of overloading by straight up adding weight. This form of progression keeps things simple but definitely not easy. There's honestly no need to get fancy with the split squat. Maintain consistent form session to session and increase your sets, reps and weight as often as you can tolerate. The bodyweight counterpart to the split squat would have to be the step up. When using only our bodyweight, the options for progression are slightly different. We're going to have to rely on increasing range of motion and being super strict with form. You'll notice how the elevated leg is doing all the work and the ground leg, it's there merely for balance. Most people have never tried a strict step up before and I'll tell you what, they're super humbling. For me, with this range of motion and setup, it's still genuinely tough for a set of 15, using only the body weight. This challenge goes to show that the strict step up is going to strengthen the glutes, and it's definitely a leg exercise which is going to translate to improved day-to-day -day function. Let's finish this video with arguably the king of all leg exercises, the squat. As with the lunge, there are many squat variations to choose from. In this clip, I'm doing high bar squats, but I highly recommend you find a type of squat which agrees with your body. Although the squat is quite simple on the surface, just sit down and stand up, there are so many components to factor in. We'd need a full video to cover the squat in depth and do the movement full justice. In your own training in the meantime, use a stance, setup and technique which agrees with your body. I encourage you to stay honest by tracking training variables such as sets, reps and weight and progress the exercise when and how you can. Squats offer so much in terms of strength and size and it's also a movement which is going to take decades of refinement to become proficient at. Lastly, we have one of the primary calisthenics exercises for legs, the pistol squat. Once again, this exercise benefits from the balance component. The full range of motion pistol is going to make the hip stabilizers and quadriceps work pretty damn hard. What I like about the pistol squat is you get out what you put in. If you don't dive bomb to the bottom position, it's really not going to be easy. I've also found the pistol squat is a move which you can always force out a few extra reps. It's a real test of willpower, especially when fatigue creeps in. I've met many powerlifters over the years who can squat an astronomical amount of weight but struggle with pistol squats. At the same time, it's really common to meet people in calisthenics who have minimal understanding of what legitimate leg training involves. As a result, our calisthenics culture gets dragged down by the size of our legs. This just goes to show that both calisthenics and those lifting weights can learn from each other to reach full potential.